in an upper middle class suburb of Boston on a horseshoe shaped street lined with trees and Victorian houses. The houses were filled with families with two professional parents and two children of varying ages. It was the carefree 70s. We ran through the backyards of each other's homes, peed in each other's bathrooms, and played at whichever house seemed the most fun and supervision free on any given rainy day. <laughs> Seamus and Musa McCabe had a converted basement with shag carpeting, a bar with red pleather stools, and their father's collection of knives and swords covering one giant wall. The boys of Rockledge Road adored playing with his off-limits collection, and on one particular soggy afternoon, we ended up hanging out there. The boys were sword fighting, their arms straining to keep grasp on the big iron parcels. Seamus, the oldest, claimed he had a magic trick to perform, like Houdini, but he needed an assistant to get into the trunk. The trunk was a bright red musty thing with goldish metal latches and locks. His curly hair fell in greasy ringlets. His grin promised delight. His slim body at 12, taking on a sleazy quality one attributes to a much older frat boy. <laughs> to this day, it is unclear to me why I climbed into that trunk. Even more so, why I let the lid be closed. Immediately, there was no air. It was hot, darkness smushing against my nose, mildew crawling up my nostrils and staying. The boys laughed, throwing the knives at the trunk, silver heads embedded, peeking through at all angles. I pounded my knuckles red. I screamed, you guys, let me out, I can't breathe. No one heard or listened. I couldn't get air. I was choking. I would soon die. I saw blackness. The humid darkness was a dirty sponge wiping my nose of air. Scary, right? Being trapped in the dark with no way out? Get a little panicky. You feel it? That's what it feels like to be depressed. I live with depression, so I can tell you about it. Depression rolls in like a bilious yellow supercharged Dyson vacuum with suction so powerful that all the resources are stripped away. The body is drained of energy. The despairing mind becomes helpless on fire and singularly focused on the pain. Time stands still. All thoughts are grounded in the excruciating moment-to-moment -moment existence. Skin feels raw, brushing callously all day against clothing and people and furniture. The magnetic pull to the bed is debilitating. The urge to crawl into a soft, dark tunnel of relief for an hour or days. Everything feels overstimulating. It's as if the whole world got doused in too bright neon technicolor and is cranked up to volume 10. The depressed mind is left wincing at too bright and too loud and too much. Skin itches and rides. Pills work and then don't. Talking helps for a moment. Alone is best, but terrifying. The only respite from the world seems to not be part of it at all. And depression lies. It screams and kicks and pinches and slams you with wave after wave of its bullshit until it's all you can hear. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. No one could ever love me. I'm too big. I'm too sensitive. All I do is let people down. I'm lazy. I'm bad. I believe the lies. I believe there was no way out. And the more I listened to depression, the less I could hear anything else. I cut myself to quiet my brain. And when that stopped working, I burned myself. I was just so tired of fighting. I was tired of prescribed hope pills with their side effects, tired of the quicksand exhaustion sucking me in, tired of cutting myself and burning myself and banging my head and lying and disappointed, disappointing everyone. I was tired of smiling while my brain tried to kill me. I just kept sliding. I couldn't get my foot in. It felt like my skin was unzipped and turned inside out with all my nerve endings exposed. Everything hurt. I spent a summer in the cold, humming, recycled air of the hospital. Hospital time was kept by med lines and meal times and smoke breaks and groups. The bright light on the unit reflected a chilly blue hue on everything. 
My shrink was the doctor of hope and talk, with Birkenstocks and glasses and goodwill to pour like tang. I didn't trust her at first. Her sweet orange granule words lay undissolved in my throat. In that institutional summer, I began to shout back at the darkness of my brain, louder and more clearly each day. I am not alone. I am not too big. It is not too late for me. The more I talked back, the quieter depression got, backing down like a bully on the playground who's been caught. I began to anchor in a new familiar, hearing whispers of hope in my mama's voice, in a visit with my dog and the smell of his paws, in a pair of tie-dyed socks, in the shared pain of strangers. I learned that feelings aren't forever, that the truth isn't measured in decibels, that I am not alone. The dark filter of depression faded, burning off like the fog on a summer day. I bet you're wondering how I got out of that trunk, right? <laughs> I'm standing here, so I must have gotten out, right? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. It was black, and then it wasn't. Suddenly, the game was just over. It's fun as short-lived as the attention span of the young boys. The trunk lid was flung open as abruptly as it had slammed shut. There was light. To be in love with air at nine is shocking. Instantly, the clean, crisp suitor of breath swept me off my feet. I ran home, leaving trunk and boys and basement behind. Once in the air and the cool and the light, it wasn't so bad. When you're no longer smothering, the memory of being smothered can play tricks. My mind does the same thing in depression's wake. I still live with depression. Some days it's tougher than others. Some days getting out of bed and brushing my teeth is a win. What I know now, though, is that it's not forever. If I stick it out, I will make it through. And I'm much more than my depression. It's a part of me, but I am so, so much more. And some pieces I like more than others, but they are all me. Needy and enough. Lonely and not alone. Struggling and okay. Scars and dimples. Grateful and impatient. Hopeful and uncertain, terrified and brave. And when I can't remember any of this, on the days when the darkness clogs my pores and screams in my ears, I borrow hope until I feel it again. I breathe in the hope, inhaling it deeply into my belly, tethered to the truth of air. Thank you.